Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over an absolutely incredible play that happened at a Scrabble tournament held just this past weekend. The tournament was in Charlottesville, Virginia, and the two players were Ryan Fisher and Maris Stambaugh. Ryan is a seasoned expert who's been playing for over 15 years, and Maris is a fairly new tournament player. He's been playing for just under a year, but he's already got 10 tournaments under his belt and is quickly improving. In this position, Ryan has just taken a 25-point lead by playing Die, and it's Maris's turn holding G-I-L-N-O-R-T. Now, Maris's best play by a long shot is to bingo with Trigonal through the A in Awa for 74 points. However, he didn't see it, and all of us, including Maris, should be thankful he didn't see it, because then we never would have had the amazing sequence of events that happened next that I'll be showing you in this video. Without seeing his bingo and not having any high point tiles on his rack, Maris couldn't find a great way to score a lot of points in this position. And there really isn't one. He could consider something like Pit from the P and Gospel overlapping with Chi and Ut, which would score 25 points and tie the game, but as Maris realized, would still leave him in a fairly inferior position. Number one, even though the game would be tied, it would be Ryan's turn, so as we like to say in Scrabble, Ryan would still be up a tempo, which is a considerable advantage. And number two, the tiles that Maris would be leaving on his rack with a play like this are pretty bad. G-L-N-O-R doesn't have any high point tiles, and it's also imbalanced. Four consonants and one vowel is not great because it could easily leave Maris with not a lot of vowels on his next turn, and thus not a lot of good options. It's also worth mentioning that we're quickly approaching the final stages of this game. There are only 10 tiles left in the bag, as you guys can see on the right, which means the bag is pretty soon going to be empty, after which, of course, the game is soon going to conclude. So Maris knows that if he wants to complete his comeback, time is going to be of the essence, and he just doesn't feel, especially given that he feels he's an underdog against Ryan, he has enough time to do something like Pit. So, going back to the original position, Maris came up with another very, very different idea. Maris decided, instead of trying to score points on this turn, to keep as good a leave as he could and hopefully surprise Ryan with a bingo on his next turn. And to that end, he put his R at the end of the word square to make squarer for 15 points. And it looks like what Maris is trying to do here is draw a bingo down the C column, hooking EL to make ELL with two Ls, and then play a seven-letter word, probably ending in ING, vertically over here. And if we look at the tiles that are unseen from Maris's perspective, it looks like a pretty good play. If he draws one of the three remaining T's, he'd hit Lotting in that spot. If he draws one of the two remaining O's, he'd hit Looting. And if he draws one of the three remaining E's, he'd hit the more obscure Lentigo. So if we look at that, that's actually eight different tiles he could draw that would give him a bingo down the C column. And with ten tiles in the bag, that means there are 17 total tiles on St. Tamaris, ten in the bag plus seven on Ryan's rack. So that's actually an eight and 17, which is nearly a 50% chance that Maris draws a bingo down the C column. So again, looks like a pretty reasonable thing to go for. So let's see what happened. Maris played squarer, Ryan had this rack over here, and pretty quickly played Ox for 41 points, under Awa forming Woe and Axe. And this looks like a great play for Ryan. He scores well, he keeps a fantastic leave with E-I-R-S-T. If Ryan can hit a bingo on his next turn, which he's fairly likely to do with that good a leave, then he's pretty much gonna put this game away. And not only that, he also blocks Maris from bingoing through that A in Awa. So, Seems like a great play by Ryan, and he takes a 51-point lead, and Maris pulled an A out of the bag, so he does have anti-log as a 7 on his rack, but that unfortunately does not play down the C column. So, did Maris fish again here? He absolutely did not. Maris found an absolutely incredible play here, and this, guys, is the crazy part of this position. Maris was not at all going for bingos down the C column, as I initially suggested. It looks like if you're just analyzing this game without knowing what happened, that's what he was doing, but he was actually specifically hoping to draw an A for the play that he made in this position. And like I said, it's absolutely incredible, so I'm going to give you guys a chance if you want to pause the video and try to figure out what Maris played here. So for those of you who found it, congratulations, very, very impressive, and for those of you who just want to see, Maris bingoed here, not with Antilog, but with an 11-letter word of percolating for 101 points from the perk already on the board on the A column. And I don't even know where to start, guys, in describing how incredible this play is. Number one, the fact that Maris not only saw this possibility when he played square, once again, he wasn't at all going for sevens down the C column. He was specifically hoping to draw percolating. The fact that he saw this and also drew it. If we go back to when Maris played square, there were... 10 tiles in the bag, which means, again, there were 17 tiles unseen to him. There was only one A. 
So the odds that Maris would draw the A are only 1 in 17, which is approximately 6%, not very high. So the fact that he not only solved the possibility, but also drew it, and that Ryan didn't block. There was definitely the possibility that Ryan could play something with Kaons or something above the F and the E in Fevering and inadvertently block that spot, but he didn't. He left it open, and Maris amazingly hits down this 11-letter stroke of genius. And for what it's worth, Maris did end up winning this game. He took a 50-point lead with his bingo, and Ryan drew EO out of the bag after his play of Ox. There are no 7s on this rack, so Ryan ended up playing Pit for 25, and Maris would go on to win this endgame pretty comfortably. He played Webb for 35 on the bottom right. He did allow Ryan to go out with Eros for 27, but it wasn't enough. Maris held on to win the game 430-407 to in absolutely incredible fashion. So... Major kudos to Maris on finding and hitting this play and winning this game in absolutely incredible fashion. And also major kudos to Ryan on his sportsmanship. I wasn't at the tournament, but I heard that Ryan actually stopped the game and called out uh, to everybody to come look at the board because an incredible play had been made, even though he presumably knew at this point he was going to lose the game. So really classy stuff from Ryan there. I always love to see that. And just to give you guys an idea how impressive this feat was that Maris accomplished, I myself have never played an 11-letter bingo in a Scrabble game. And I've been playing tournaments for nearly 15 years. I've played, I'm sure, tens of thousands of games online, and I have never done it. Recently, also, Will Anderson actually posted a video about some of the longest bingos in Scrabble history, and I've copied here some of the stats from that video. And he noted that 11-letter words statistically happen only once in every roughly 6,600 games. And in reality, it's even worse than this, because the data here is taken from simulations of games played between two computers with perfect word knowledge. And in reality, almost no humans have perfect or even close to perfect knowledge of the 11 letter words. I, for one, have never formally studied any 11 letter words, and almost nobody does, because given how rarely they come up, the investment is simply not worth it. And all of that just goes to show you guys how impressive what happened in this game was, so... Once again, major kudos to Maris and to anybody watching this video who was able to find this play. Really, really impressive stuff. And yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. And if there are any more really cool plays like this uh, that I'm not aware of, feel free to send them my way. I would love to feature them. So appreciate all you guys watching. Thanks again for all the support, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.